Right, in this little example, we're going to create a, uh, a new toy box. So I'm going to go into toy box, uh, create a new one and create a blank one. And we're going to look at triggers and basically how you can make things, uh, your objects or your um, uh, items within toy box come to life. What, what actually makes them start? So as you can see there, I just did toy box new and I've just done a new toy box. So it's now load up and we're just going to create little mini exercises just to show you the basic elements of, of how they work. Now, once you've got into your toy box, uh, what we're going to do now uh, is just, like I say, put some objects in and just test how they go. So, with that, look, I'm just going to press the uh, touchpad on your PS4 controller, which will bring your toolbox up. And I'm just going to flick through the various objects and menus that you've probably seen in your toy box that you can add. But the one I want you to go to is go to Creativity Toys. And in here, you have various objects, and I'm hopefully going to cover all these in my little mini exercises. But what we're looking at is triggers. So, we're just going to come across here. There's quite a fair few. But the ones that I'm going to be looking at are these ones listed over this side here, which are your trigger. Okay, that's a little pressure pad that when you walk over, it will actually make something happen, which is quite uh, a most common one that most people I find use. Uh, the other ones we're going to look at are your action button, which is a physical button that the user press, a target which they shoot, a switch button, um, uh, and a couple of the other little objects as well. So let's pick the trigger. And let's click that area on the screen. It will just drop that area on, onto my uh, toy box. Then using my arrow keys, I'm going to go across and I'm going to choose the button option. Now you can rotate these around by holding the R2 and using the arrow key to rotate it. So holding R2 down, you'll notice now I've got a menu control. And using the left stick, I can rotate it around. Uh, and the other one I'm going to pick is the target. Bring the target in, which always goes in the wrong way around. I don't know why, so I've got to rotate it around. So rotate the target round. Uh, and then we'll bring in a switch as well. I don't particularly like these ones. I think it's sometimes a bit confusing, but we'll bring it in across as well on the screen. Okay. And the last one I'm going to look at um, are these things where you have to throw items through the door. So you've got the well uh, or the, uh, tree, the tree stump. So I'm going to use either one of these two. Yeah, the well or tree door. I'm going to use the tree door from the Brave Pack, but either one works exactly the same way. But it gives you an idea of how they're used. So what we're going to do is that with these triggers, we're going to get them to fire a uh, party popper off. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go across uh, and go back on my creative tools and grab the party cannon one. Just a straightforward. And all they're going to do is that when you go over, it will add to these items. Now, different toys have different options, but we'll stick with the basics just to get the idea how these triggers work. So I'm just going to put a party popper for each one of these, these little triggers that we've got. So I'm just going to bring those across and drop them across for each individual one, like so. Now we've got that was all set up, what we're going to do now, I'm going to bring us back, I'm just going to circle out this and exit back out of the screen. Now I need to create the connection between the triggers and the party poppers. So what I have to do in the character, I have to get his wand out uh, to use the control. So if you use the arrow pad and hit the left button, you get the wand that now appears on the screen. So what I can do now is if I point, I can point to that pressure pad and when he walks over that pad, it will fire a trigger and that trigger will go to the popper and tell it to, to um, uh, fire some sort of celebration. So I'm just going to step back, hold L2 down. And you'll now notice the little pad, I've got three options. I can use the settings, which is the square button, circle, get rid of it, or X, remove the position of the item. So we're going to press square. And it comes up and says, right, what can we do with this item? We can only do one thing, create a logic connection. So I'm going to select the option by pressing X. When I press that, we are then given a submenu. What happens when you walk on or when you walk off? So you can actually have a different action when you walk off the item. So it's one or the two. But we do, when you step onto it, and it says who steps on it. It can be anything, and that's the characters running around, cars, vehicles. We want the actual individual to do it, so we can choose player. But you guys, like I say, you can pick any one of those items. 
then when you pick player, it then says which player would you like, player one, player two, player three, we're going to pick any. Now once you've done that, look at the top left, it says right, we've got that trigger to occur, but what happens? Select a toy now that you want the reaction, reaction from that uh, event from occurring. So what we're going to do now is we're going to now go and point to the object, hold L2 down and select that. Okay, so we're going to shoot onto that one. So what we're going to do now is what do you want to do? I want to make a connection. So I press square and it connects to that object. And it says, right, you now have a choice. And this object can do three things. Fireworks, confetti, or a whole big explosion at the end. So you can choose any one of those. In this particular case, I'm going to choose fireworks. So I'm going to select that with my X button. And you'll now notice the connection has been made. All we didn't need to do now is test this out. So let's get rid of the wand. Uh, and let's walk over the platform. And hey presto, our little connection works. It fires that option off. Now if I walk off, it stops. If I walk back on, hey, it keeps exploding. Right, so what we're going to do now is when we press this button here, okay, you press over there, it's now going to make the confetti explode on the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this up. Now what I tend to do is I forget to get the wand out. So you try and target and you, nothing seems to be happening. So just remember you have to press the arrow key on the keypad to get your wand out. Now you can target the object and then you get the little tools up there. We want the cogs so as the square button, we press square. Now this one, again, same option appears, new logic connection. But the difference here is there's only one thing it can do is press. So I did that quite quickly, but I select on the pressed option. Now I point to that controller, highlight the scroll, do the connection, and it now says, what do you want? In this case, we want confetti. So I click onto confetti, and you now see the join has occurred. So now I go back, take my wand off, press the button, and hey presto, the confetti explodes. Right now we're going to do the target. Relatively exactly the same thing, so let's get the wand out, pull our particular object up, press the little square button to get the tools up, and we're going to create a new logic connection. So new logic connection. And the only thing you can do with this is hit it. So click on to hit. So when you hit that object, keep our wand open, point to this confetti, and press our uh, little square button. Right, what, what can you choose? Do you want firework confetti? We'll choose firework on this case, and you'll see the connection join. We'll take our little uh, wand off to test the left button again. Now hold L2 this time and we can fire. So we'll fire our target. And it can then do various explosions on the screen. Now with the switch. I'm not a great fan of the switch because it can have multiple settings. So in this particular case, I'm now going to get the wand out again. Point to my little switch. Press the square button. And now what I'm going to do is now, when you've got the option here, when you switch it on, when you switch it off, there's a number of different choices you can choose. Now I've got it when you switch the switch on. I'm going to point to that little particular box and say, so when I switch this on, I would like confetti to occur on the screen. Connection appears. Now what you notice is when I work it on, I've actually, when I go off it, switched it off. So nothing happens. So I have to go back on it again and it switches it on. Now the switch is now on. If I go off and go back on again, Nothing happens because I've switched it off. So I don't particularly like this, but it gives you a different way how you can do it or get the option to occur. Now, this last door is a little bit tricky, okay? You'll notice the door's not activated. We're in play mode and you'll notice there's no swing. And when this door happens, you have to have a light in that option. But what we basically do is we throw an object through that door and it will trigger the firework to explode. So let's get our wand out of this particular option. Okay, and now I'm now going to pull the object and press the square setting. Now, you've got various properties with here. So this one's got a lot of options. We've got different ways it could be set up from the word go. So some of these you can have a look at and just see what they do. And again, by just playing around with them, you'll get to choose what ones you want to happen. So when you've used it, do you want to disable the door so you can't use it ever again? In this case, no, I don't want to disable the door. I want it to keep it always able to switch it on and off. Uh, detection level, you've got various different things you can do. You can move the transparency so you don't know it's on but I'm going to leave those the switch that one off so it doesn't disable the door. Now if I go to a new logic connection you'll then notice what do I do when the door is activated, when it's deactivated, when you throw townsperson in, what is the object? Well it's when you throw an object through the door so I chose there on town when you throw a townsperson in and I've made that now connection to say right do the grand finale and I like the big option between the two. The only problem I've got is the door is not activated. I need something to switch that door on. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to use another pad. So I'm going to press my mouse button on the bottom and get my area option, my little area trigger. And I'm going to move that to position that in front of the actual item. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to circle back out of this and I'm going to pick my little uh, wand 
Now what I'm going to do here is get my wand back out, point to the area. Now I'm going to do here is, right, when we create a new logic connection with this item, you walk into this area and you step onto it. And who steps on it? The player. It can be anybody, but we want it to be a player and it can be any of the players. What do you want to do? Now I point to the door. And what I like you to do when I point to the door, it says, what do you want to do? Do you want to reset it, deactivate it? I want you to activate the door. I want the door to come to life so it now looks like it's got magical powers. Now that's switched on, I need now an object to throw it through. So what I'm going to do now is uh, get a town person. So I press my pressure pad on my controller and I can flick through the list and find me some people. So let's find me a character. Uh, let's go back. Oh, let's use, I don't know, pick Star Lord. Yeah, we'll have a couple of him. So we'll just drop these down occasionally all over the place. And obviously you can't drop it on an air, it's already done on the screen, but that should do, and circle out. So now, if I pick up the character, walk over the plat, you'll now notice the door comes active. Excellent, so I can now have, the Avenger now lets me do it. And hopefully if I aim it right and fire through, whoops, and would you believe it, I missed. Typical. So let's pick up that item again. Let's pick up another guy, don't you come back. Let's walk back, the thing's still active. Point to face the door and the target comes on so I can throw it straight away. Hey, and the item just works and the things come on. And now you know to the door's deactivated. So let's go back and pick him up again. And hey presto, when you go back, I can do repeat the process again and throw him straight through the door. That's it really, just to show you how triggers work. So have fun with those and uh, see what you can put together. Thanks a lot.